to use the marquee tool in Logic Pro. Create a MIDI region, cutting, making a region duplicates, copy and paste. In the marquee mute tool option, in automation, punch in recording, tabbed transients, the marquee tool selection, playhead selection, highlight things. I'm gonna show you 12 ways on how you can use the marquee tool. It's not an exhaustive list, but it's just 12 ways that I use the marquee tool a lot. Stick around to the number 12 tip where I talk about using the marquee tool. It's my favorite tip and it's a game changer. For your reference, I'm using Logic Pro 10.7.8. What is the marquee tool? The marquee tool is in your toolbar here and it looks like this. It's just a cross. I almost always have it in my command click tool which happens to be this second tool. And if you want that tool to start, you have to press command. That's why it's called the command click tool. Whenever you press command, you get that tool. If this thing was scissors, if you press command, you get that tool, which now in this case is scissors. So I almost always have it as the marquee tool. Number one, the marquee tool is in general, a way to highlight things. So when I press command, I have the marquee tool now, right? We've gone over that. But in general, this is what the marquee tool does. It's just, it highlights anything you, um, I guess, go over in the square like that. If I'm on this Juno instrument here, and I zoom in, I can highlight the Juno instrument. I can highlight the drums and the Juno instrument. Now, this is very important. The marquee tool is correlated to the snap grid, which means uh, up here, snap. If you have it set to bar, the marquee will snap to the nearest bar. So the bars up here, 23, 24, 25, 26, the marquee tool here is going to snap to those nearest bars. It can't go anywhere else now because it's set to bar. If it snapped a beat, it goes to, it will snap to the nearest beat. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of dragging to the right and letting that marquee tool snap to the nearest beat. What I usually have it on here with snap is I usually have to smart and that's just kind of looking at where your mouse is nearest to and it's making that decision for you. So I like it on smart most of the time because I'm working in beats and divisions and, and and bars. I'm not necessarily working in one specific thing, unless if I am, I might go and switch it there. You always have that opportunity. So I'll have it on snap. And now I can go and highlight my Juno. I can also go up and highlight the drums. So what do you do now when you highlight things? Let's move on to number two, which is cutting. The marquee tool is another way to cut regions. So let me give you an example of one thing I do a lot with the marquee tool is when I'm working with background vocals and I'm editing large chunks of audio in multiple tracks. For example, I have this vocal here, this green region, and I also have these two regions, these tracks below it. These are harmony tracks that are in line with this, these regions. So what I would typically do with the marquee tool is I would highlight and get rid of all this dead space, which could be background noise, so you highlight, and now that it's highlighted, I just have to press backspace and it deletes it. So that's a lot quicker than doing it with the scissor tool, which might be like cutting it here, cutting it here, here and here, or highlighting both and doing it cuts there, going over and deleting it like that. You can do it that way, but it's much faster just to go marquee what you want deleted and just press backspace. So that goes with one region at a time, like that. It goes for multiple regions at a time. I can go and backspace all this right now and it will delete, it will delete all of those regions. I'm not gonna do that because it's a bit of an intense example. Number three is using the marquee tool to copy and paste. I do this a lot. You might be familiar with this from some of my past videos where we talk about copying and pasting a lot. If we go down to this uh, piano track here, Let's say we want this piano track in the verse section as well. Right now it's only in the pre-chorus section. So we could command C, bring the playhead over and command V. That's a copy and paste, right? We also have the opportunity, now I'm quickly kind of going through this here, is holding option and clicking and dragging. That's another function of copy and paste. So you can recreate this with marquee as well. You can 
marquee whatever you want to copy and do option click. And it's going to bring that entire selection over. So when would a productive example be to use this marquee copy and paste? How I like to use it is copying certain selection of a region. So if I just want the beginning four bars of the piano, I can marquee it like that. Now I can hold option, click, dragging it over. It's only going to take that selection. Now when I let go, it's going to make that copy, but it also didn't affect the original region, right? It, this is still unaffected. It didn't make a cut or anything. So I do that a lot when I just want to copy specific sections of the of a region because the other way you'd have to do it is kind of option clicking and dragging and then moving the region back in that's just a bit slower right but now you can just highlight and even if you just want the first bar let's say you just bring that over now you have the first bar there but you know and a more productive example would be the first four bars to get a bit of a loop or maybe it's the, the latter three bars or four bars where you put it here, something like that. Just like the tip before this, you can do this with one region at a time or groups of regions. So if, if I also wanted the first four bars of the melody stack or the first four bars of the Vox stack, melody stack and piano, I can do the same thing, highlighting them all, option click, dragging them over, made a cut on each one, let go, and it brings those regions back to no cuts at all. And it has, I have the paste here. Number four, all, similar to copying and pasting, is making uh, region duplicates of whatever your marquee selection is. So for example, you know Command R is a tip I've gone, I've done before in, in some of my tutorials, is if I just click on a region and press Command R, it's going to duplicate that region directly after the re where the region ends. So that's the, the way I would do it most of the time when I'm duplicating regions. However, I would use marquee tool before doing this sometimes when the regions don't always line up on the grid. The Vox stack would be a good example to discuss this. Notice if I zoom in on the Vox stack, it doesn't line up to the grid, right? And that's because if I unpack this, these are just audio tracks and some of it's tailing over. So what would happen if I just went, if I highlighted all these and did command R, it wouldn't all line up on the grid, right? Because it's not locked into the grid. So I'd have to come here, highlight all these and like move them back. You know, that's fine. You can do it like that, but a more productive way is using the marquee tool because, and we can, we can go here and if we want to be 100% certain, we can go bars. We can highlight from bar 23 to 31. And now we know our marquee is 100% on the grid from bar 23 to 31. Then we can go command R. And now we know it's 100% locked into the grid, or at least you're making a direct copy from bar to bar to the duplicate region where it's bar to bar as well. Again, this goes for multiple tracks and regions at a time with marquee or one at a time. Number five is using the marquee mute tool option. So if you want to just mute a certain selection of a region, or again, multiple tracks or multiple regions, use your marquee tool, select what you want to be muted. So for example, let's say we're working on a pre-chorus here, but we're not yet sure if we want the first four bars of piano, highlight them, do control M, and then those regions will be muted. Or if it's just a specific part, you can do highlight that specific part, do control M and we'll mute that specific region. Whenever you want to unmute that region, just do control M again and it will unmute it. Number six is using the marquee tool to create a MIDI region. So if you add a new software instrument track, you don't have any MIDI region or a kind of green square here to create MIDI data, right? You can go and use your pencil tool to create the MIDI region, but you can also just select where you want to put the MIDI data. So let's say it's this four bars underneath the piano, right click and then create MIDI region. Number seven is using the marquee tool for punch in recording. Very valuable if you're doing a lot of like on the fly vocal recordings. For example, if I'm working on a, a Vox track here and I want to sing in between these two regions, I don't want to have to record over this region and I know exactly what I want to sing using this mic, let's say. All I have to do is marquee the certain selection where I want to sing. 
and I might go off here to smart again. So I might do something like this. And I just have to press R now on my keyboard and I'll create a punch in recording right here on this specific region or this specific marquee selection. So if I press R. I'm tired of listening to your friend. Then I make that recording here. And notice you'll see this little kind of red cycle bar at the top. That's called punch in recording. So if you want to know more about that, you can check out some of my other Logic Pro tutorials on punch and recording. Number eight is using the marquee tool for tab to transient. And what tab to transient means, well, I'll show you what it means. So if I'm working on this guitar part and I highlight a specific section, but I only want to highlight where the transients are. And this is helpful, let's say, if you're working with drums, maybe we should focus on the drums and focus on, for example, a shake loop. And I only want to grab where those high transients are, which are these, this, these parts here. I can do a highlight wherever I want. And now watch this. If I do shift left or right arrow, I'm going to, it's going to move wherever, it's going to jump to wherever the transients are. So for example, this, where I just moved is grabbing that transient, if I just scroll in, see how it's just grabbing the beginning of that transient. If I go tab and move over, it's just moving over transient at a time. Number nine is using the marquee tool selection as your playhead selection. So notice at the play button here, you can right click and you can say play from marquee selection. So if you click that on, if you have a little checkbox beside it, what that means is you can actually just play your playhead wherever your marquee is selected. So if my playhead is over here, but I want to loop the, the melody stack and listen to the chorus here, I just press space bar. I'm just going to play right from the beginning of this section. So you don't have to cycle, you don't have to move your playhead all the time. You can just use marquee selection. Now let's go back over here and just listen to the drums. Can you tell me? It's helpful to move around with your playhead. Number 10 is the marquee tool selection. So now if you have a marquee tool in your command click tool, so I'm pressing command and have my marquee. If you also attach a key, the option key, so you're doing command and option, what you're gonna get notice is I hover over a region, it changes what the cursor is like, right? You kind of have an arrow plus the marquee. Let me zoom in just so you can see that. Pressing command, so I have the marquee tool. Now watch as I press option, it changes the cursor, right? So that means when you're holding command and option, and this will only work if you have the marquee tool in your command click tool. When you're holding both these keys and you click a region, it's just gonna automatically marquee select that region. So I wanna marquee select this area, I'm holding option and command, same. Selecting the Juno, selecting the drums. Again, this is helpful because if I know I want to select, for example, this piano part with a marquee, I don't have to go and kind of select it like that. I just have to go Option Command and click it and it's selected. So you don't have to be cute about it. You just hold those two keys and select the region. Number 11 is turning on a different setting in Logic, which allows you to have the marquee tool at your disposal all the time without even having it as your Option Click tool. I don't use this, but I'm going to show you anyways, just in case you'd like to use it. So if you go to settings, general, and let's look for it here. I believe it's under editing, fade tool, marquee tool click zone. So if we click this on, it's under general editing. Now, when we hover below half of a region, it's going to give us that marquee tool. And I'm not doing anything, but just hovering over. So a Above half of a region, you have, or uh, our track, let's say, you have the cursor tool, below half is marquee. Same with every single track. So that can be super valuable. It can also be very annoying if you're not used to it because you're always, you want to, let's say, move this region over here, but actually you accidentally are grabbing it with the marquee. So it's a personal workflow decision. It's there if you want to use it. The number 12 tip, which is a game changer and my favorite, is in automation. If you are automating well, whatever you're automating, 
when you start a new automation, when let's just do a simple volume automation on the guitar. I see a lot of people doing automation like this, they're clicking dots, and then they're going about the automation, something like this. The way around this is to start from scratch again, creating the line, clicking the selection which I want to automate, and now that's generated four dots by just clicking once, and then I can go and pull down. Those are some popular ways I use the marquee tool in Logic. Let me know if you guys have any questions in a comment, and as always, I will see you in the next video.